What's up guys, Houndish here, and today it's weekly reset for Destiny 2 on July the 6th. So it's going to be a pretty busy week for the game as we've got the launch of Solstice of Heroes for 2021. And that means new armor, and yes, the upgrade grind is back. But also we've got a new weapon, cosmetic rewards, and of course the European Aerial Zone. So we'll cover all of that stuff, plus Master Difficulty for the Vault of Glass is going to launch with new time lost weapons, as well as high stat armor. And then we have a fairly significant mid-season patch, sandbox changes, reprise moon and dreaming city weapons plus fixes and then of course we've got all of our nightfalls vendor rewards and we'll round up relevant activity stuff for the week so guys i hope the video is useful and feel free to get subscribed as we've got loads more to cover but now let's get into it and as we get into the game today as always we've got the overlays for the events and stuff for the week we can see solstice of heroes is here also that new difficulty for the vault of glass and then looking at the milestones right here we can see the solstice begins visit evil avante in the tower and Compass Rose, the new shotgun, is actually going to be one of the rewards for that opening quest, which is pretty cool. We need to visit Evil Avante in the tower to pick up our Solstice quest and get going. And once we've done the first step of the quest, we can jump into our first clear of European Aerial Zone. After that, we're going to be able to head back and meditate at the Statue of Heroes in the tower to receive the rest of the Solstice Renewed set. So from there, we'll begin to do armor upgrades and stuff like that. But at the same time, Eva's inventory should become fully available. So we're going to be able to pick up bounties, and these will grant XP, Bright Dust, and key fragments, which are going to be important for crafting solstice keys to open packages. And all of the armor will be upgraded through three tiers as usual, with objectives visible on the armor pieces themselves. So good luck with the grind for that. However, if you want to upgrade multiple sets for different characters, fortunately, this year we get some new perk upgrades in Eva's inventory. And these come in the form of armor accelerators, which will speed up objectives for rare and legendary armor sets respectively after completing the first set. So if you're running multiple characters and you want to grab the armor, keep an eye on her inventory, as we are going to get a boost for subsequent sets. Also this year, we get the new Solstice shotgun called Compass Rose, but once unlocked we'll be able to get additional drops via Solstice packages opened with the keys that we craft, so it's going to be cool to check that out, and then if you keep an eye on the triumphs for the event, we'll be able to earn the new emblem and ghost shell. And so that's the quick overview for Solstice, and we'll be able to do this until August 3rd, which is when the event will end. Veterans of the event pretty much know the format, but I'll be sure to keep you posted with any new stuff worth knowing over the next day or so. Of course there are all of the patch changes that we've had in update 321 today. I will link a video down below breaking down the majority of the details for that update if you want to check it out. Next though, Master Difficulty Vault of Glass is going to be launching today. Enemies in this version of the raid are going to be at 1350 power, so be sure to absolutely max out that pinnacle power for the best results. And rewards wise, Master Vogue does have its own triumphs required for the Fatebreaker title, so if you're working on that, be sure to take note of them. And then additional rewards will include the Vault Strider ship, awarded via Master Glasser Triumph when completing the Master Difficulty. And we'll also get access to Time Lost VOG weapons, which are essentially adept raid weapons, this time with an additional perk in the third and fourth slot which should be switchable to give us more options. The time loss weapons are going to be featured weekly alongside the current challenge, and yes, they will be repurchasable via the Cache of Kabir at the end of the master version of the raid once you've unlocked them. On top of that, there is the potential of significantly higher stat roll armor, and so there are a good few reasons to run the master difficulty if you're interested in it, and otherwise that loosely summarizes the new variant of the raid. Just bear in mind, it's going to be a little tougher than what we've gotten used to, so good luck on the hunt for those sweet rewards. In terms of the featured challenge for this week though, we can see Strangers in Time, a challenge awaits. And so it will be interesting to see exactly what that is and how it feels on that new Master difficulty. For the Nightfalls this week, the featured Nightfall is the Fallen Saber, and that includes the Grandmaster variant. Should be a pretty fun one to run. And in terms of the drops, we'll be able to get the Azumi RR4, and that'll be both the normal version in the normal difficulty, and then the Adept version dropping via Grandmasters. Moving over to the Eververse store though, as always, we're going to have a bunch of items for the event, many of them featured for silver right here on the front page, so take a look at those in your own time. But we've also got the Grand Luster shader right there, which I believe is a new one for the Solstice of Heroes event this year. And hey look, it finally loaded up for us right there, actually pretty nice one. You can grab that for 300 bright dust. We also have the Shocking Entrance transmat effect, as well as the Silly Handshake multiplayer emote, and then we've got the Cabana Ghost Shell right there for 2850 bright dust. There's also the event page, and this is where you can grab uh, all of the different bundles, glows, and things like that. But on the main Bright Dust page, we've got the Catching Rays emote that we can grab for today. Pretty cool one right there. There's also the Archipelago Pitch Exotic Ghost Shell up for grabs. That one's 2850 Bright Dust once again. 
And then we've got Ares Grace, a new exotic sparrow, or I believe actually that may have been featured in the last event, not entirely certain. But we've got the Thunderwing ship right there, as well as the Twisty Dance, and then the Raging Lepus ornament right there for the Jade Rabbit. Definitely a pretty nice looking one, and you can grab that for 1250 Bright Dust. Then we've got the Beach Ball Projection, as well as the Warsat Arrival, Cabal Shield Breaker, and Sandcastle Effects Transman Effect. And for shaders, we've got Golden Age Wine, as well as Welded Brass, and then the Pomegranate Gloss Shader, and Tangerine Gloss. Of course, these are some of the event uh, shaders right here, available this week for 300 Bright Dust. Also, for vendors, let's take a look at Banshee for today. Of course, there has been an update uh, allowing Banshee's weapons to consistently have that Masterwork slot available, so that's a pretty good one. And we've got Toil and Trouble with full auto trigger system and auto loading holster. The Long Shadow with Snapshot Sights and Triple Tap. And then Last Perdition with Moving Target and Snapshot Sights. The Gnawing Hunger with Subsistence and Kill Clip. And then we've got Outrageous Fortune with Auto Loading Holster and Quick Draw, followed by Bad Omens with Tracking and Quick Draw. Then the featured mods for today are Radar Tuner as well as Freehand Grip, but of course these will roll out on a daily basis. Also, don't forget to go and check out Ada 1's inventory. This week, she does have the Carrot Type 2 uh, armor set, at least for Titans. Don't appear to be any absolutely outstanding stat rolls for the Titan, but definitely worth a check if you are after those higher stat rolls. And for today, she's got Auto Rifle, Ammo Finder, and Cellular Suppression for the mods available, so certainly worth grabbing any of these if you need them. In terms of Legend and Master Loss sectors, for today, we've got Exodus Garden 2A on the Cosmodrome at 1310, dropping exotic chest armor. And the other one is the excavation site on the EDZ at 1340, dropping exotic arms. Over on Europa though, the Exo Challenge this week is Simulation Survival. We can also see that the Eclipse Zone is over here in Eventide Ruins, and the Dark Priestess is the featured Empire Hunt. Also, if you do happen to dive into Deepstone Crypt, Copies of Copies is the featured challenge for this week. Finally, over in the Dreaming City, Agonarch Abyss is going to be the Ascendant Challenge for the week, and that's found in the Bay of Drowned Wishes right here next to the spawn. So if you are completing Ascendant Challenges, I'll run a little bit of gameplay showing the exact location of the challenge for this week. But otherwise for today, guys, that is what we have to round up in the weekly reset. So let us know down below if you are going to be jumping into the game this week and what you're going to be tackling first. We've got quite a few things going on. But if you've enjoyed the video and found it useful, a like rating down below very much helps us out on the channel and also feel free to get subscribed and turn on notifications as I will be keeping you posted on everything related to the game but for today guys I appreciate you tuning in as always and I hope you have an awesome week. Kerr, you're so deep into the well.
Guardian down. Guardian Town. 